Hello, and welcome back to Real Day Trading. Okay, this is going to be fun. First, you should know, I just recorded an entire video, listened to it back, and it was reverberating like crazy. I think I fixed the problem, so hopefully this one will work. So, what are we doing? Well, as many of you know, I am about to launch the $50,000 trade for a living challenge. In my mind, this is the most important challenge I will do. And the reason for that is it will show definitively, irrefutably, that one can do this, that one can have a career trading for a living, that you can start with $50,000, treat it like a business, and make enough money to live off of. So how much money is enough to live off of? Well, we did a poll. And the poll, which was posted on Reddit, got plenty of responses. So it's statistically significant results. Well, at least for that population, it is. And the results were pretty clear. The average that people felt I should make is $7,184 a month. Comes to $86,210 a year. It seemed a little low to me. This with 253 trading days a year, it comes to rough, it comes to $340.75 a day. So I upped it to 10,000. That's a 200% return in a year on your 50K. That comes to roughly $395 a day, $8,333 a month. So that'll be our starting goal for the 50K account. If I go over that, if I make $13,333 a month in a month, let's say the first month. Well, you can take that $5,000 extra profit, put it into the base amount, and now we're at 55K. That's a 10% increase in the base, so I will increase the goals by 10%. The new goal will be to make $110,000 a year. Hopefully, we can keep increasing the base amount and thus keep increasing the goal. However, if by chance I don't hit the profit target, I can't see that happening, but let's say it does, well then, the shortfall will have to be made up for in the next month because we're doing this to trade for a living, right? So you, you, you need that money to live off of. Can't just go, well, I missed it this month. I'll just go on to next month and go back to my regular goal. No, you still need to hit $100,000 for the year. That's your profit target. And just like a business, you do not want to miss your revenue goals. You've all seen earning calls when a company misses their, well, sometimes the damn thing goes up, but usually it'll go down if it misses its revenue goals. However, I was told by some people that 50K is a lot of money to start with. They can't get together that kind of scratch. Okay, I get it. First, keep in mind that this is your business and you should invest in it appropriately. And by the time you start, you will have hopefully gone through all 10 steps in the wiki, which you should read the damn thing, and be ready to actually trade confidently knowing what your win rate's going to be, knowing what your profit factor will be. Because you will have done it for a significant amount of time, first in paper trading and then one dot, one share, one contract and so on until you are ready. Do not trade until you are. But seeing as how I still do get that 50K is a lot, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna take 20K out of the account, which I did on Thursday, and I'm gonna build 30K to 50K. I'm gonna do it in the dark. And when I get to 50K, we'll start the challenge and I will show you all how I went from 30 to 50 and show you the trader sync log and then go on to uh, thinkorswim and I could show you the um, order history and all that. And everything, of course, is posted in real time. So all the trades that I've been doing in this 30K account are the same trades that you saw on Twitter and on Reddit and so on. They've all been posted in real time. But it occurred to me as I'm doing this, and now the account is up close to $4,000 in four days. I seems to beat that uh, 
$395 daily goal. And that's what a 30K account. But this is a really good educational opportunity for you all to see it as it happens. So fine. I put everything into the TraderSync account here. I'm bring that up. Here's TraderSync. All of the trades since uh, Thursday. That's it. Yep, Thursday. Are in the account here. And I publish them here into this so you can see them all with all the notes on them, all the all the setups, it's all there. You'll see every trade. There's a few trades I didn't post. I believe an AMD trade I lost on, a Boeing trade I lost on, and a few ES trades I won on <clears throat> because they were just too quick to post. But in the future, everything will be posted. Uh, but 99% of these trades are posted. There's 63 trades there. I think 59 of them I posted in real time. Four of them I didn't post. Two of those four were actually losses. Um, so it's all right here. I have an 81% win rate at the moment. Cumulative balance up $4,025. Okay. That is where we stand with it. When I get to 50, we will know that this is the start of the challenge. Hopefully... When this is done, it will stand as that irrefutable truth that you can do this for a living consistently. Obviously, you need to train and you need to study, but people need to know at the end of all that, doing this and having financial independence is a real thing. Okay. You'll also notice that... I will be trading primarily stocks. Now, I'm going to trade futures. I'm going to trade options. I'm going to do some swing trades. Not many, some. I like being all in cash in this market at the end of the day. But primarily, you're going to see me use stocks, which also means I will be using the $130,000 you get I have here in day trading buying power. That's four times what your base amount is. So why, why mainly stocks? Why not options? Because options aren't always your friend. They may seem like your friend. You may be like, hey, buddy, I'm here. I got leverage. Oh, you want to trade Tesla, do you? Well, <laughs> come over here. I have an option. Yeah, I get it. They're quick. They're easy. They're alluring. But they're a ticking time bomb. When you make a trade, right? Let's say you trade, I don't know, let's say you're going to trade Apple. Good old Apple. You're like, all right, I'm going to go along here at 149.38. That's what I want to do. And you think Apple is going to go up. Reasonable, bullish market today. Apple was bullish, all good, sector bullish. Okay. But tomorrow, boom, market goes down, right? And that is not outside the realm of possibility. I mean, look at the damn thing. We're here. I do not believe you're going to have a real recovery until we have a capitulation low. So it's got to capitulate. And that means it's going to feel like 1929. For those of you that were alive in 1929, which is absolutely none of you, but it better will feel that way. You can see red bar after red bar after red bar. It's like it's never going to end. The crash is here. We're at 390, 385, 380. Oh my God. It's over. But at some point, and do not try to predict the bottom of that, because if you do, you will get swept away. But at some point, it'll stop. And then just as suddenly as it started, it will reverse. And the reversal will be even more violent than the drop down. And it's going to be massive volume. And then you will see the recovery. And at that point, your ass better be long. Because that is going to be one hell of a ride up. But until then, you can expect chop. Which means it's very well possible that tomorrow, your old friend here, Apple, is going to be down maybe a dollar or two. Right? So let's say you bought... 
300 shares and tomorrow Apple's down $2. You're down 600 on it. You're like, oh, shit. Now, if you had bought the option, let's say you bought this one right here, right? Good option. Solid, 145. Decent delta, 0.7. Close bid ask spread. You can get it for $6.12, whatever. Tomorrow, the damn thing's worth four. And now, you have a choice to make. Apple's sinking. Your option's dropping. And now it's decaying as well. Do you really want to hold that one more day? I wouldn't. So you close it. Now let's say you have the stock. What? 300 shares? $45,000? That's almost like one-third. A little, little more than one-third of your buying power. You still have a lot of buying power left. You can hold that. Because you honestly think Apple is never going to see the sunny side of 149.35 again. Really? Of course it will. When? I don't know. Well, it will. Apple's a strong company. It's not like it's not going to be above that price point ever again. It's just a matter of how long can you hold it for. When an option, you do not have the ability to do that. But if you have the stock, you do. You can hold it, you know, obviously, yeah. All right, if I hold it for a year or two, Apple's going to be higher than 149 chances are like 99 percent but if you do the walk away analysis which i recommend you all do you'll find that the farther out in time you go from when you exited the more likely you are to have had higher profits so the question is is how long can you hold that position for? Because the technical levels of support and resistance can keep expanding or contracting based on the time frame you want to hold your trade. If you're only looking at your day, then it's VWAP, right? But if you're looking at the daily chart, well, it could be the simple moving averages. It could be your algo lines. And now not all support and resistance is equal because you have your major lines of support and resistance and your, your kind of soft ones. So you can hold Apple if it doesn't break one of the major lines and that could be all the way down at 135. But you're going to hold it for a $14 drop. If you're a long-term investor, you will. If you're a short-term trader, you might be willing to hold it for two weeks. Now, the odds of Apple going above 140, you know, 40 or whatever the price was in a two week time frame is a lot higher than the odds that it was going to go over it in a one day time frame. Again, options do not give you that flexibility. So I prefer trading stock. However, you will still see I'm going to trade options from time to time. I trade a couple options today. As for the types of trades, well, you can look today here and see. Um, let's go right to there. For example, today, FDX, right? I took this trade. Go up here to FDX. There it is. I took this trade around 220 right there. That's when Chairman Powell and his saucy sexy ways of his with those sultry eyes and, and that stare he gives you right into your soul excites the audience anyway sorry as Powell was talking spy was tanking as usual and what do you notice about FDX here it consolidates spies dropping it consolidates so I buy FDX knowing that this has relative strength here. And when SPY pops, which it did here, look where FDX goes. Bam. All right. I took a dollar off that trade. So when I'm in a choppy market like today and yesterday, I'm going to be looking specifically for
for stocks like this. In a trending market, which was Friday and Thursday, Thursday was a bearish trending market, Friday was a bullish trending market. Well, then it is different types of trades, right? Then you're just looking maybe at a sector, for example, and I'm going to go long or short. So let's see, on Friday, I went long MU, I went long Apple, I went long AI, that sector was strong. And so it was much easier when it's a trending day. When it's a choppy day, it is far more difficult to trade. Okay, so now we have all that, right? We have the 30K going up to 50K. Let me just ask also, please stop asking me about risk reward. I just did a whole post on it. People who try to do risk reward, and it's a favorite thing among new traders and and struggling traders, they're always, oh, what, was your, what was your risk reward on that? Okay, here's the thing. Stop using risk reward. It doesn't work for you because you need to know the probability of success. It is not 50-50. Just because, oh, my target is a dollar above entry and my stop is 50 cents below, I'm getting two to one. Well, no, no, you're not. Not if your your stop has a 90% chance of being hit and your target has a 10% chance. Now you are losing three and a half to one. So you would need to know what that likelihood of the target being hit versus the stop being hit. Also know the farther away your stop is, the less likely it is to be triggered, the more likely it is your target gets hit. But the more you lose if it is triggered. The farther away your target is, the less likely it is to be hit. But the more likely, the more profit you'll get if it is hit. You would need to know Okay, this setup, it has got relative strength. It has an algo break, good relative volume in a choppy market with sector strength and it broke through an SMA. This setup, which based on the thousands of setups you have traded in your trading career, you know has an X percent chance of working. You don't have that number written down. You just know it in your head because you've been trading for a long time. Full-time traders, no risk-reward in their head. They don't have the precise two-to-one or five. They know generally their likelihood on a setup in certain market conditions. So they know pretty much where they're going to put their stop. If they're using one, I don't use them. And where they're going to put their target. New traders and struggling traders know none of this. None. And stop pretending you're actually using risk reward anyway because what you're really doing is going oh shit i'm down a dollar i have 300 shares i'm down 300 dollars and you're looking at your PL and not thinking about your risk reward because you don't know what your risk reward is anyway so stop it there's so much crap that people think that they that, that need to know to trade and what they're doing is is not learning the shit they really need to know but that's a whole other thing, isn't it? Yes, it is. But the thing today is the 50K challenge and getting 30K up to 50K and then trading for a living. We are going to do this. This is going to be, it's not hyperbolic to say this is going to be historic because once this is done, you can always point to this and show it is possible. You can trade for a living. You can go from 30 to 50 and then use the 50 to trade for a living. And we are going to do it and it is going to be amazing. But until then, till tomorrow, I will leave you how I normally leave you, which is to tell you that if you didn't understand any of this shit that I just said, well, read the damn wiki. And if you have a question for me, please 
have read the wiki first because it's painfully obvious if you haven't. And I'm just going to tell you to read the damn wiki because I need to take the time to save the time for the answers for people. That made no sense, but fine. For the people who have read the damn wiki and are asking really good questions. So you're just going to get an RDTW as your response. So please read it first before asking questions. And if you do ask a question that isn't in the wiki and it's a good question, please give as much information as possible. Don't just be like, I'm long oxy at 68 and I missed my exit. And what do I like? Tell me exactly like I got in at this time and I'm in options or I'm using stock and I'm hoping to swing trade it or day trade it. Otherwise, it's going to just be a game of 20 questions, like pulling teeth to try to get all the information out before I can actually answer your question. All right. Now, now I can tell you to watch more videos, read the damn wiki, and I will see you out there. Good night, everyone.